everyone. Welcome to the fourth lesson in this series on the atom. Today, we will look at Bohr's atomic model. You should remember that one of the problems of Rutherford's atomic model was that the experimental evidence of spectral lines contradicted his model. Bohr proposed his model of the atom based on ideas about light to help explain this contradiction. Strange, you may think, but let's ask Dayasha to tell us more about how light had an impact on our understanding of the atom. Hundreds of different colored lights around us, neon signs, street lamps, fireworks. Would you believe me if I told you that light caused the biggest commotion the scientific world had seen in the last hundred years or so? Well, more specifically, the energy that generates light. Have a look at the model of the atom that we have been exploring. Watch how it changes from a serious thought in a Greek philosopher's mind through Thomson's plum pudding to the definite discoveries in the Rutherford laboratory. It took almost 2,000 years to get this far. Here it is, protons, neutrons and electrons. But will this idea of electrons revolving around the nucleus as planets revolve around the sun hold true against the questions of inquiring minds? The aims of today's lesson are to identify the contribution Niels Bohr made to our current model of the atom and how he used ideas about light and the work done by Max Planck to develop his model. Note that the quantization of energy proposed by Max Bohr will be dealt with in more detail when you learn about the electromagnetic spectrum. So, the information on spectra is to help you understand how Bohr came up with his atomic model and not examinable. We will also use the idea of quantization to conduct flame tests to see how we can test for metal elements. Let's cross over to Dayasha again to find out more about the problems with Rutherford's atomic model and how scientists solve these problems. Let's have a look at our nucleus and electron. According to classical physics, any particle moving around in a circular path must lose energy. Classical physics predicted that the electron would crash into the nucleus when all its energy was given out. Can you imagine atoms suddenly self-destructing all around you? Does this happen? No, atoms are stable. So why are atoms stable? A simple question, but it had scientists stumped. Classical physics that had been used for years to explain the behavior of everyday things does not work for atoms. A new way of thinking was needed to explain the behavior of these newfound atomic particles. Scientists worked for years to develop the atomic model based on this new way of thinking. Each fresh idea was criticized and debated, but the atomic model developed further. Let's meet some of the scientists who made progress in the development of the atom. In 1666, Newton found that white light from the sun could be separated into other colors. He passed the light through a prism and found that the white light was broken up into different colors, which we now know as the spectrum of light. A natural example of a spectrum of light is a rainbow. In the spectrum of light, there is no definite separation between the various colors, so this is called a continuous spectrum. During the 19th century, scientists thought that all forms of energy were radiated in one continuous flow. Max Planck came up with a different idea. He suggested that energy was not continuous, but broken up into small packets. One of these packets of energy, and the plural, is quanta. At the same time Planck put forward his ideas, chemists found a new way of identifying new elements. Samples of gases were collected in glass tubes. Electrical energy was applied to the tube and the gas inside heated up and started to glow with a particular color. This light was then passed through a prism and a strange spectrum formed. This was not a continuous spectrum. Only very specific lines of colored light were visible. The other part of the spectrum was not radiated and so appeared black. 
the lines of colored light were well defined and at definite positions in the spectrum. This type of spectrum became known as a line emission spectrum. The chemists recognized that each element has a unique line spectrum. When some mathematicians heard about these discoveries, they set to work on developing formulae that would predict where each line would form. All of these separate discoveries were important, but it took one man to pull all these different ideas together. His name was Niels Bohr. I started my study of the atomic model by working with Ernest Rutherford. His experiments showed that the old plum pudding model needed to change, but a classical approach to electrons orbiting around the nucleus was also problematic. By applying Planck's quantum ideas, I was able to work out the energy states of an electron in a hydrogen atom and use this to explain the unique line emission spectrum of hydrogen. Well, I'm sure you agree that Niels Bohr did some important work. But let's see how he made the connections between Planck's ideas, line emission spectra, and a new atomic model. Take a look at this line emission spectrum of hydrogen. Bohr said that the reason we see lines here is because energy has been quantized based on Planck's theory. When the atoms of hydrogen are energized in the discharge tube, they absorb energy to become excited. This energy is absorbed in set amounts, as if the energy were packed in containers of specific sizes. Let me try to explain this theory to you practically. These small boxes are specific sizes. A 10 gram box, a 50 gram box, a 100 gram box, and a 150 gram box. In between sized boxes do not exist. In other words, you're not likely to find a 17 gram or 123 gram box of sweets. The boxes have been quantized in very particular sizes. Bohr explained that once an electron gains energy, it is promoted to an excited state. But the electron cannot stay in this excited state and then falls back to its original ground state. When this happens, energy is released in the form of light and we see different line spectra. Bohr used this experimental evidence to show that the energy of an electron in an atom is quantized. Now, other everyday objects can also illustrate this very useful idea of quantization. This watch, for example, has hands. The shorter hand tells us what hour it is, and the longer hand tells us how many minutes past the hour. The movement of the hands is smooth and continuous. This is an analog watch. Here is a digital stopwatch. Nothing is moving gradually. All of a sudden, the numbers jump to show a different time. The numbers jump with set amounts of time. This is an example of how atoms gain energy. It cannot happen in a smooth way like we see in the analog watch. Atoms absorb and radiate energy, similar to the way that digital numbers jump in definite amounts. They gain and radiate energy in packets of certain amounts. The energy absorbed and radiated is quantized. Max Planck revolutionized scientific thinking by saying that energy is not continuous but occurs as specific packets. This concept had a huge impact on how scientists viewed the electron pattern around the nucleus. It also influenced the way technology developed, as you can see all around you in clock radios, watches and computers. Let's have a look at how Bohr's atomic model was different to that of Rutherford's model. In his model, Bohr proposed that electrons move in certain special orbits at different energy levels around the nucleus. Bohr's model of the atom also forms the basis of being able to identify elements through flame tests. These flame tests depend on how the electrons are arranged around the nucleus or the electron configuration, which you will learn about in the next lesson. The arrangement of the electrons in the atoms of different elements is unique. 
That means that the emission spectrum of each element is also unique. Many metallic elements emit light strongly in the visible spectrum of light and these emissions are so intense that elements can be identified simply by the color they impart to the flame. Let's look at some common metal elements. For this experiment, we will use compounds that contain a metal element. For this experiment, you will need a watch glass, a Bunsen burner and some nichrome wire. You will also need some hydrochloric acid and salts Let's take sodium chloride, sodium nitrate, and sodium sulfate. To perform the flame test, take the nichrome wire and dip in dilute acid. This is to clean the wire. Now we use the wire to place a small amount of sodium chloride into the flame of the Bunsen burner. Notice that the flame is bright yellow-orange. Let's test the other two sodium salts. First dip the nichrome wire into the acid to clean it. You need to remove all the sodium chloride before doing the test on the other sodium salts. Now let's dip it into the sodium nitrate and place the wire in the flame of the Bunsen burner. Before testing the last sodium salt, we need to clean the wire by dipping it in the acid. Dip the wire in the sodium sulfate and then place it back in the flame. Do you see that the flame is also a bright yellow-orange? With all three salts, the flame was a bright yellow-orange. From this, we can deduce that it is the sodium that causes the bright orange flame. Let's now test a few other metal salts. Let's first start with potassium nitrate. Notice the violet color of the flame. Let's now test lithium carbonate. Observe that the flame burns with a pink-red flame. Finally, let's test the copper chloride. Observe that the flame is a blue-green color. The above experiment or flame tests relate to the line emission spectra of these metals. These line emission spectra are a direct result of the arrangement of the electrons in metals. Each metal salt has a uniquely colored flame. The color of the flame can be used to identify the metal element. This lesson has shown how Niels Bohr used evidence from experiments in chemistry and Planck's idea of quantization of energy to propose a better model of the atom. Many scientists have contributed to our understanding of the atom. You need to be able to identify five major contributions to the current atomic model we use today. Next time, we will see how the atomic model developed further using quantum theory. Remember to do the task video. Also remember to visit the Mindset website. Goodbye.